everyone. So today I am going to have the second episode of my crochet podcast. Today is July 10 and probably I would be able to make this video live within the week. So, or next week because today is, yeah, today is Sunday and then, yeah, within the week I, I, I might be able to publish this video. So, by the way, I'm Cheryl of The Elegant Ermine. You can find me in Instagram as d.elegant.ermine. And then I also have my Facebook page, theelegantermine.ph. And I also have a Pinterest account. And I sell patterns on Ravelry, Lovecrafts, and Creative Fabrica with, with the name The Elegant Ermine. So for today's episode, we're going to have, or we're going to talk, or I'm going to share a few things with you. So first is, like what I've said before on my first episode, that I'm going to show you my, the works of my mother, my, the crochet items, or crochet items that my mother did, and I would also like to share with you my favorite uh, crochet hook and some whips and finished objects and a few just a few or a couple of um acquisitions like yarn uh yarn purchase today or yarn purchase for the past weeks so that would be what i'm talking with you for this episode so let's start with the crochet items that my mother did the very first one I already shared with you. This is a shawl or a shawlette because it's small. Um, this is made with motifs and with an acrylic yarn, Monica acrylic yarn. And this is the pattern is from a magazine and then it's supposed to be a tablecloth, but she made a shawl out of the pattern from the magazine or a chalet for my daughter so this is the first one and because I like the pattern on this the motif on this I asked her to make one for me that would be of my size so, but then instead of making a shawl I asked her to make me a poncho so this is the poncho this is no longer a stashed yarn, but we did bought these yarns for this particular project. So this is a poncho. It's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be like this. So your arm would go here. It's open on the side. And then the head would go here. So this one is the poncho. And because we still have, uh, or my mother had a lot of yarns for, or this particular yarn, because we bought, we were able to buy a lot of yarns for this project, she made another, another one for my daughter, and it's a capelet. So th this and this one and this one, it's still the same yarn. So this is a capelet. I don't know where she took the pattern for this, but yes. And it's a cape bed. It goes like this. It's like this. This one has flowers, but I took it off because I don't know. It's like I'm not sure if my mother was supposed to put it here, but she put those flowers like on the wrong side. So I took the flowers. And I thought of putting it back, but I don't know where it is now, so it's no longer here. But this one is a capelet. I'm gonna share with you a photo of my daughter wearing this capelet also. The next one is a neck warmer. 
so this one this is made with acrylic yarn steel monochrome acrylic yarn and the other pattern is or this is supposed to look like flowers but because of the color they're mostly mistaken of like they're cauliflowers but it's this one supposed to go around your neck then you can tie it like this and then you can wear over with a coat and actually my uh it was my mother who did the flowers but i was the one who assembled it like this so i was able to wear this when i was still working abroad because you know with acrylic it's quite or they're a bit itchy or worn when you know worn with our kind of climate here in the philippines So most of this, or these, yeah, most of these crocheted items, we were able to wear this, or my daughter and me were able to wear this when we were still abroad. So, and mostly of these are crocheted last 2013. Yes, 2013. And then on 2017, when I was like uh, hunting for local yarns, I was I stumbled upon this seller in Baguio which is Miss Crochet a lot and I bought uh, I was able to buy acrylic yarns from her and at that time I was not yet serious with crochet so I was buying yarns and then sending it to my mother in the province and asking her to create a you know a project for my daughter so this one is another project of my mother that she created for my daughter. This is a virus shawl. And this is made with an interfill yarn, still acrylic, but with an interfill yarn, eight ply. Yeah, I think this is eight ply. So this project works up works up very fast because this, you know, the, the yarns, the yarn is good is quite thick. So she made this one again for my daughter. And I I made her follow along a video by Joanna Martinez. So this is the virus shawl, the very first virus shawl that she created, and that's the time on uh, that that's the yeah that was the time also that she told me that it's it's quite easy you know the virus shawl is easy to follow. So this is the virus shawl. So the cake is. Or the color is with a white and pink and then light blue and purple. This is very nice. I will put the link of the store below for this particular uh, yarn. But I think she's no longer uh, she's no longer uh, selling this eight ply or thicker uh, type of interfill acrylic yarn. But maybe if you wanted to, you can ask the seller to create one you so I will put the link down below so this one and uh, these are just the items that I have here that my mother created but of course she already she also crocheted some shawls for for me that I was able to uh, I was able to sell because I commissioned her also with my made-to-order shawls I uh, there was one lost in time shawl maybe I, I am not sure if that was lost in time shawl by Miho Crochet but I would put the phone here South Bay shawl, uh, South Bay shawl. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I will put the photos here. And also. 
so a early I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I pronounce the, the name correctly. It's Eri Henia or Eri Jean Michal that she gave for her sister in the US. Uh, basically those are the yarns or, or the projects that my mother did and maybe also one um, granny shawl that I asked her or commissioned her to do for an MTO but I was the one who made the border I will share the photo here also projects that my mother did. Today I'm going to share with you my favorite crochet hook. So before like what I've mentioned that the very first um, set of crochet hook that I, I had were not ergonomic hooks and I did experience uh, pain on my wrist, pain on my arm or my fingers when I was crocheting because I was crocheting larger projects like shawl and it took me a lot of time or a longer time before I could finish the project. So because of that, I invested on um, ergonomic hooks. They're quite expensive or some of which, uh, some of those hooks are not that expensive, but some are expensive. So. One of my favorite uh, hook is this. This is Susan Bates. Um, this is uh, no. I purchased this one because he wanted to because he wanted that you know I could give rest to my first hook because I was using it uh, most of the time with my crochet projects. It's sized four millimeters, and I wanted to like you know, give it a time to rest. So I purchased this hook, same size with my first hook. I love this because I can, uh, it's, you know, the handle is quite long and I can do both grips with this. I'm not having a hard time. I crocheted with both grips, the pencil grip and the knife grip. And with this, I don't have a lot of problems, you know, switching from one grip to another because it's it's good when you, when you can crochet with both grips. Because for me, somehow, when I crocheted using the pencil grip, most of the work or my right hand does most of the work. But when I do knife grip, the my left hand does most of the work. I don't know if that's how you or that's what you experience with with such grips, but that's how that's that's how I can explain why I do crochet with both grips. Because somehow when I when when my right hand does the work, my left hand can have a rest and then if my left hand does most of the work, then somehow my left or my right hand can, can rest. So I can crochet long. So, and with that, you know, switching to both uh, grips, I, I find it easier when I'm using this one because it has a, l a longer, um, longer handle and it, it is with a rubber handle here. So with um, crochet or with a uh, pencil grip, I can position my, my fingers here or if not here. And then with the knife grip, I can position my thumb here so it's it's very convenient for me and then you know the the tip of the handle doesn't sit just you know within my my palm but right 
like it's extending beyond, be, be, it's extending beyond my palm, which is very good for me. And also because this has a round uh, handle here, sometimes or yeah, when I crochet, sometimes I can just you know go around between my fingers when you know pulling through yarns or yeah yarning over which is very convenient for me also and it's in it's an inline hook that somehow it has a very pointed uh you know tip here on the very end that i could poke stitches like tight stitches i could easily poke it with a with a head or i can use the lip to poke through tight stitches so I love this this is not that expensive and although I only have one with this I would like I would want to have more sizes of my Susan Bates so with Susan Bates they come in with some rubber handles or rubber grips and then also with bamboo and also that doesn't have or Susan base that doesn't have any like any coating here like any rubber doesn't have any rubber or any uh, bamboo grips like the metal only so I love this Susan Bates now for the web this is one of my active whip this time this is a shawl this is my Kalia Siva shawl for my Kalia Siva shawl. Actually, I this pattern I was supposed to have this tested, but then, you know, I was not yet ready with the pattern. I did a lot of revisions and tweaking with the original one, so, and I had to recreate it for me to, you know, revise or edit the original pattern. So, yeah, I'm still working on this but the prototype is this so this is my Kalia Siva this is the prototype this is made with an interfill acrylic yarn 3 ply and I I was able to create this at the very height of the pandemic lockdown last 2020 May of 2020 so it's been two years ago and I wasn't able to finish this because like I I did the diagram already I was like I'm not even finished but I, I had it already but I have some inconsistencies here that I wanted to change like the this part here is not consistent with you know the wrong side and the right side though it's not that noticeable but I don't like it so I have to tweak it I have to revise it so I did another prototype but then I had a lot of problems with the revisions, like I did a lot of frogging, so, and it makes me tired and bored with the pattern. So I shoved it on the shelf and had it on the back burner of my whips. So like it's been there for two years already, but recently I wanted to release this pattern. So I wanted to have it tested. But because you want, you know, I did some revisions and I forgot the pattern already because it's been two years. Yeah, the problem with me because, you know, with designing, when designing such pattern, I'm not good with, you know, writing it down, like writing it directly on a notebook so that I will not forget it. So, yeah, because I forget it already. So I have to redo the whole pattern. And because also of some revisions especially on this part I did you know I did revise a lot of, of, of the pattern here so I have to recreate it so this is one of my active whip I'm I, I'm you know I'm writing the pattern now and then I I have to revise the diagram also because I did some revisions on this part here so this is I use this yarn I showed this yarn before in my first episode that I bought from Stitches and Beyond by JK. So this, an, this is an 8-ply fine cotton. So yes, the pattern can be made in, in can be made with different yarns. So I used an acrylic yarn and this time I used a cotton yarn. This is fingering weight yarn or category number one. So this is one of my active whip. 
And another active active whip that I have, I cannot show you because this is a test uh, pattern, but it's a cardigan and I'm using this yarn here. This is the I'm not yet done with it. I you know few rows. I'm just I just did some you know few rows and I can't show you so it is a cardigan. And so far those are my I only have a couple of active active whips this time. And for the finished project, I was able to finish a test uh, pattern for testing also. So this one is still in its testing phase. So this one, this is a top. This is a Biwa top by Christine Mendoza of XTY Crops Whatever. I will put the link of her IG account down below. So this is a Bebo top. I love the pattern. And I had, um, you know, I had my, I put all my notes on my Ravelry because I should also have some, a link for the Ravel, in, in Ravelry for the testing. So this is the Bebo top. It's a halter neckline and uh, I made this for my daughter, and but I could I would be able to wear this also because you know my daughter is also like her size is also my size, so I can wear I can totally wear this top also. So I haven't taken a photo of this yet, but yes, look out for the release of the pattern soon. It's very easy and. You can make the this top with any type of yarn, highly customizable, like in terms of the size. And it also comes with a pattern for a dress. So this is Bebo Top. It's an opening at the back. And it's very, very pretty. I like it and my daughter, I had I had tried this one with her and she likes this one. And um, I have another finished project as well. This is a top. Once again, a top. So this one. I showed this one before, but it's still a whip, and it's done already. So it's a halter top with some, you know, lacy detailing on the upper part and some i don't know what to call this but i love this one and I, ha I i had a great time creating this so this is my own design this is my own design and maybe i will call for the testing yeah i will have a, a tester call for this soon i still have to write the pattern so this is a halter top that you can this one can go around your neck and then this one on your body so this is with i made this with a hand dyed yarn size or category number two and i'm still you know figuring out if this particular pattern can be made with a size one uh or category one uh yarn because I wanted to try with some mercerized um, thread or you know the, the, the smaller sized uh, yarn so this is a top I haven't had a name for this I don't have a name yet but definitely this is uh, included with the collection that I'm going to launch hopefully soon so this is the top another one of my finished projects a finished object and for some and the last one that I would share to you a the latest yarn purchase so with this because the last time I did show you the yarn or yeah the Velcon yarn that I purchased I only had one skin for that and I use it for this top and this up I used two skein already so for the second one I did go to the store run to the store very fast to buy another skein of that 
and I did consume two skin of that Falcon and I also purchased this yarns here this ones so these are I purchased four cones to this for that particular uh, project that I'm doing so this is a 12 ply spun polycotton I bought this at the lots of yarn store I will put the link down below and I'm not sure with the category but for me this is um, category 2 uh, yarn so this is what I'm using with the cardigan so I only had the the for my latest yarn purchase I only had the Vulcan another an extra skin for this and this um, spun polycotton so that's basically it for the today's episode. I hope you enjoyed and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this uh, episode and I'm going to be episode 2 of my crochet podcast. Thank you and God bless.